Good morning, Senator Cotton. Thank you for joining me. Hey, Hugh, it's good to be on with you, and congratulations on your appointment as the CEO of the Nixon Library. That will be great fun. It will not affect our weekly chats, though. The radio show goes on, and I hope to host you at the library sometime when you are out and about with your book, which we'll talk about another time. I want to ask you for advice for the media, because I think they're in the five stages of grief after the Mueller report. You've carried on in a level-headed way on the Intel Committee throughout this entire process. You and I both know the Russians attacked us. We've always said that. But the media always goes too far in some places. How do they course correct now, Senator Cotton? Well, it would help to focus on the facts, Hugh. I mean, the last two years, really the last three years in the middle of the campaign has been filled with rampant speculation um, and wish casting um, by the media because they deplore Donald Trump, if I could coin the term. Um, it would be much more helpful if they would focus on reporting facts and running those facts through editors that they can verify with on-the-record sources or documentary evidence rather than the rampant treatment of anonymous sources who are given anonymity for no other reason than they want to uh, attack a president that they don't like. Um, And furthermore, I would say it would probably help them, too, if they focused a little more on news and less on spin and punditry and analysis. I mean, I'm not a big cable news consumer, Hugh, but I see it a lot as I walk back and forth uh, through my offices here. Um, going to meetings with our Kansans, and it, it seems like every time I walk by a TV, there's a panel with five or seven or nine or 12 failed politicians or failed operatives uh, opining rather than reporting. We have monetized the conflict over Trump in the media, and people know what I mean by that, that you can pick whether you want to be pro-Trump or anti-Trump by the dial, and you can always be guaranteed of talking about Trump no matter where you are because the president is the biggest story and and he's like you know Godzilla on the stage I don't know how any Democrat beats him now but overconfidence is the bane of everything and I like uh, with malice towards none with charity towards all do you think the president will uh, get back to policy now that he's been exonerated well, this really is like a new day in the Trump presidency uh, for not just the last two years, Hugh, but going back to the campaign, almost three years. The Democrats and the media have been waging an unrelenting campaign we now know that was built on nothing but fiction, but spin and fantasy. Uh, as the president said, it was basically a hoax. Um, I've said this all along based on my work in the Intelligence Committee, Hugh, that there's no evidence that the Trump campaign colluded with anyone or any organization inside the Russian government. Um, The media and the Democrats spun that because they don't like Donald Trump and they can't believe that he beat Hillary Clinton. Um, That's all behind him now. He can focus for the next 19 months before next November on the pretty remarkable record that we've put together over the last two years of economic growth, wage growth, Uh, for working-class Americans, a military rebuild, uh, and many other bright signs uh, that have come from the last two years. Do you agree with Lindsey Graham, and me for that matter, that we need a a special counsel, though not necessarily one appointed pursuant to the regulations which do not govern this, to look into the conduct of the FBI and the intelligence community in 2016 concerning the FISA uh, process? I believe... I think I think we need more scrutiny for sure, Hugh, now that this investigation is behind us into exactly how it is that so many Obama officials and senior officials in the FBI uh, came to believe that a American presidential campaign uh, was colluding with a foreign intelligence service to include some potential instances of um, intelligence laws um, and uh, the FBI's investigatory power. No, look, the vast majority, 95, 99 percent of all FBI agents and all intelligence officers have nothing to do with these matters. They're out every day trying to keep the streets of Little Rock safe or trying to protect us from Russia's very many real malign activities, um, trying to intercept fentanyl coming across our border. Uh, But at the top, in Washington, at the leadership level, it appears that there is a serious cultural problem in some of these organizations like the FBI, uh, like the National uh, Security Division, like the State Department from the last months of the Obama era, uh, and what they did not only to put a thumb on the scales in the campaign, but then try to sabotage the transition of power uh, to the Trump administration. Do you, let's pause it. Do you think they tried tried to sabotage the transition? 
I do, Hugh. Um, I, I think that they, they rushed down an, an ill-considered document um, that was, again, built on a fake dossier that is actually the only source of collusion with foreign intelligence, namely Christopher Steele, a discredited uh, former British intelligence officer who no doubt built most of the allegations in that dossier based on, yes, Russian intelligence services. So senior uh, Obama administration officials attempted to sabotage the transition. That's your working premise? I, I don't think, based on what we've seen over the last three years, you can have any other working premise. I and agree. I think for, further, in, further inquiry will reveal exactly who they are. Some of them are well-known. Some of them are not well-known. But further inquiry is needed. I agree. Senator Tom Cotton. 